はい。Yours. They are、uh, what knows of us ast- trying to astral project. Not successful yet. <laughs> Same. Um, I haven't tried it out yet. I've been a bit busy, but I will try it out before my next class for sure. I'll try it out today after Cash's class. Thank you. Yay, the teacher's here now. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, I'm like two or、help. three minutes late always. <laughs> yeah, I'm just pulling up my files now. I got a whole bunch of pictures and stuff I want to show you. I'm excited. The ones with the face. Like the previous、okay. class with Faze, right? With, I wish I could stay for longer, but I had to go since I needed sleep.、Okay. Which class are you talking about? I said the Faze. The Faze. I oh, I, that one was good, bro. I was like, I was, it was smoking up in there. It was、Aww. getting a little too much. Yeah, it was getting cute. There was a lot of conversation. I remember. Okay, I go. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's get right started. I want to sum this one up almost as simple as possible, as well, because I know this is being recorded. So I want to keep this one real good and real simple, but I know it's going to kind of be hard because this is something that's been one of my toughest、um, assignments, which is teaching. All of my people about ego and soul. This was something that took me a while to understand. I mean, I'm still understanding parts of it, but it took me about two to three years to fully understand ego and soul so that I can get into 5D and then show others how to get to 5D. Now, you guys have been in and out of 5D. And let me show you this picture. And, um, oh shoot, I gotta. Restream. Okay, so 
I love this picture so much because it's extremely accurate. I hope it's clear. Does it look good? Yeah. Okay, it's good. Okay, okay. So, yeah, it could be a little clearer, but we'll we'll make do with this. So, as you can see here, I rather I don't like calling them dimensions because dimensions are kind of, I mean, you could call it that, but it's just like saying realms. It's like realms are layers in dimensions and dimensions are in densities. So that'll start to make sense a little more as we talk. But look at this, for example, look at the first density. First density is physical and energetic um, materials, elements and fundamental energy. So we're looking at crystals. You already know crystals are scientifically alive, but not the same alive as like someone in the second density or third density. So they're just present. Look at it like if you look at something that's one dimensional, it's like it's just there. Something that's second dimensional, it's a line. It's like it goes from one thing to the next. It's really that's very animalistic, just growth. One thing I want to say about densities is like different chakras are different densities. So most of the human population are stuck on their lower three chakras or their lower three densities. Right, and our next step is the fourth one, which is the heart, and then the fifth one, which is the throat, and then the thy crown. I want you to apply those uh, chakras and see that these densities are the chakras of the universe. So we talk about how there's 12 densities, and um, remind me, guys, we're going to talk about 12D portal. That was the white hole that the beings came through within our galaxy to start life here and they talk about the white the lyran white hole we could delve into that more like the 12d shield that's more stuff we could get into when we have our psionics class and psionics is um wait what happened did i click something um psionics is essentially the study of like psychics like psychic energy um psychic phenomena so we talked about that a little bit before and how they're basically the same thing. So I don't know why it's small like that, but I'll make do with it. My computer's just glitching a little bit. So look at the second density. Now the second density is physical, plants and animals. Look at it like two dimensional, like from one point to the next, from birth to death grow it's all just growth when you're in third density souls in organic portals this is where things are getting less um less like it's just growing you notice there's more um like you see up here it's in the soul essence now it's like it's its own life it's its own experience and that's also where we get to the fourth density which is really this correlated exactly with the fae and the fae basically they rose to the fourth density because they're like we can't exist amongst humans in 3d and when you're in these densities you could have like you could be third density and have you could be let me switch that up you could be fifth density and have a third density body a lot of our star family that are coming here most of them are not they don't have physical bodies but the ones that do they're gonna come here and just like we talked about uh, the Archon or the Archon Reptilians and how they're among us in the four density and how they take over people's bodies like that. Um, and some of them are here physically, even though they're not allowed to. It is just like that. So this whole astral war, psionic war, this is what we're talking about. It's basically like it says here, um, ETs, ghosts, paranormal beings, basically spirits. Now... You will notice that the fourth density, this is important. The fourth density, we call it the middle ground. It's basically, um, it's the in-between of the third density and fifth density. So most fourth density beings don't stay there long. When you pass away, your physical body's gone. You're like, whoa, like I'm still alive, but you're not really. You're in your astral form. So your astral form, you then, when you walk through the portal, you abandon that astral form and you go into your soul. You're, all of these things, you see it's a pyramid and that is because 
the further you go down, the denser it gets. So if you want to exist in this this like physical realm, you need a body. So if you want to exist up here, you need an astral body. If you want to exist down here, you need a physical body. And all of these ones, it just gets denser and denser, and you the soul gets more for lack of a better word, loss. More distant from source. But that's why souls could get lost or forget because they are going, they're slipping into a vehicle. And that's why this is important. We're going to get into why this relates to ego and soul. Because your soul is here and it jumps into vessels like a video game. And I'm going to continuously refer to ego as your video game character. And you're going to see why in a second. So just as a pig, a cow, or a chicken is just as alive as you, it has a spirit as a spirit just like you. Maybe not soul, but let's not get too caught up in the, the detailed dynamics. Just look at it like this. Like the cow has a spirit and a life just like you, but it's not as conscious or aware as you are. And as your consciousness raises, you won't need things like, for example, a physical body. You're like, oh, I've had the experience of physical body. The only reason why I need a physical body is to help beings that are in the physical. Some of you will remember in Sirius when a bunch of us went over there. Um, I don't have memories of that because I didn't specifically go at that time. But for example, um, Macklin or um Angeli, some of you guys will remember going too serious to help beings like for example wolf beings that were lost um within the third density so it's like they forgot that there were souls in a vehicle and when you die you go into the fourth density so you're a spirit and a lot of spirits they're afraid to walk through the white light because the white light is um the gateway to the fifth density but you don't really become aware of what's there so a lot of spirits they don't want to go through the light they're afraid i hear my nephew calling me through the door <laughs> so um that's why they talk about the white light and all that and why spirits are scared you're like why don't you just go through the light you have 5d awareness but they do not or they forgot okay so that's why a lot of us go to incarnate in down here so we could at least become aware to those lower dimensional beings or lower density beings and help them and be like, look, there's way more. And they're like, what are you talking about? And you're like, yo, there's way more to this. You know, you could astral project once you get them to the fourth density, then it's like, OK, now I can teach you about your soul essence. And then they don't need to go to the third density unless they want to help like us. That's what a starseed is. It is kind of a bit creepy. <laughs> when when you look at it like this, Stavros is saying it's like kind of creepy. The whole dynamic of it is very interesting and it doesn't get too kind of scary anymore. Especially when you astral project a lot. When you astral project a lot, you just get so used to being... No, I was the talking about... Go ahead. I was talking about like a movie, a series. I know it's oh. a bit off topic, but it talks about astral projection. And it's a bit creepy, like, these shows, they try to stop you from astral projecting. And it says you can, like, swap bodies with other people. And you're, like, both in the astral. And, uh... I'll tell you creepy. right now, that can't happen. That, that would be scary. But you oh, can't. You can, still, you can still, like... <clears throat> you can still, like, give out your energy. Though, to, like, the body. Yeah, you could give energy out, but no matter what, you're going to have a bookmark in your body, which is your astral cord. So I'll let all you guys know that. Never be afraid of getting lost or someone jumping in your body. That won't happen. That's just another Archon tactic way to scare you. And you know they like to tell you half truth, half lies. Just like that. I feel it's possible to take our 3D vehicle to the 5D, illuminate the flesh um and spiritualize the flesh that actually i'm trying to understand that fully it is possible whenever i ask them it is possible but that requires a lot of you know what it's partly like this you can this is this is what it really is you could have a third density body and exist and be aware of the fifth dimension 
just like you can of the fourth dimension. So your psychic abilities are really just you becoming aware and attuning your body to become aware of the fourth density. So you won't have to astral project unless you really just want to be on the fourth density. You can be in the fourth dimension and density and perceive it without leaving your body. Same with the fifth density. You guys, all you guys that have past life memories and you remember, even if it's just one or two memories, that's because you were aligned with 5D real quick for a little bit. So that means you have the awareness of your soul's experience within the fourth density and the third density. So it's like your soul's millions of years old and it has all these different experiences being in different types of lives or video games, I keep calling it. When you go up, we're not going to, we'll briefly touch on this because that's not really important right now. But six density and seven density, you'll notice it gets way more divine, like it says up here. So you start to merge with other souls in a larger soul. Um, and seven density is where individual souls start to leave. You don't have an individual soul anymore. Your soul meshes with other souls, which at the when we're down here, it sounds kind of scary, but most of us are seven density and decided we need to go down here, which only part of our soul can fit into a human body. I so seen, we have seven density selves guiding our lower density selves. I seen someone on YouTube, yeah. I think I told you about him. His name is Cal Melquez. And basically he said he went to like the sixth or seventh density and it was like the boudic and he said he felt like he was one and he didn't even have to leave his body, he just went in a high vibration, like a meditation and it was like blackness but like a peaceful blank type feeling. You know, that's interesting you say that because anybody that does have experience with the sixth or seventh density, it's almost like they've they consider it like they've merged back with source or God. And you, it, it is because you're getting closer back to source, your your true essence. Um, You can merge the physical and astral light body. You pretty much do it by alchemizing your physical body. Yes, so everything Jeannie is saying here, spot on. And I want you guys to read over that real quick too, if you like. Because when you are fifth density, you have awareness of the fifth density souls. You just know where everybody's from. You know your past incarnations. You could easily go to the Akashic or whatnot or talk to different beings, but you have a physical vessel. And this is where people, they don't, they like it or they don't. Some beings, they like to, it's like when you astral project to a planet that they have physical bodies, but they can perceive you. They're like, what is a human doing here? They're not saying, oh, what is a human astrally doing here? They're like, what is a human doing here? Because they don't consider it like, di they consider it different, but not different at the same time. Because you're there with them. It's so just in a different density form. See what I'm saying? So you, all of you are going to be in fifth density and are already in fifth density. It's kind of like you're in and out. And um, I'm going to tell you how you know when you're in fifth density or fourth density in one second. But I want you to scar this in your mind. Because this is incredibly important. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to really get in touch with in that. Um, you know what? Okay, let's go to the next picture. Okay, I'm going to go to... Let's, let's do this one. Let's go over this one real quick. I like the way this one looks. This is the Law of One from the book, The Law of One. This is spot on too. But, okay, you're going to see what I mean by it, it just is kind of off in some energy. Like or like it's missing some powerful points, but that's why we have all the other pictures because they're helping us. So now mix the other picture with this picture I'm showing you. So we have first density, just beingness. They are just beings. Two billion year life cycle. A second density is growth. We talked about like point A to point B, like it's second dimensional. Um, so you could see autonomous life from orgas. What am I talking about? Organisms, <laughs> plants to animals, 
develops awareness of self through interaction with the environment and has a chemical body. Third density is self-awareness. They're, they're aware now. So we are here. Our subconscious is veiled from the conscious to give a genuine choice of polarity. So you have a choice of service to others or service to self at this point. And most beings stay here for a while. It says 75,000 year cycle incarnations of 30 to 900 years. So you see there's a long time that souls or I want to say souls. Um, source essences are within these cycles. So we were all here at one point and we rose up again. We went from up here from the 12th density to the first density. Now we're going from first density to, to 12th density. But all of us have angelic lives and those angelic lives are because we, we are eighth density or higher beings. But again, we're star seeds. We're like, oh, we want to help out the lower density planets or galaxies wherever it is and the only way to do that is by incarnating into lower densities while holding our higher density awareness or essence which also includes your higher self guiding you keeping you on track which is really just you so no matter what you guys can't get lost in the lower density it's almost impossible at this point at least on this planet with our mission work we have too much protection we have too much guidance and it would ruin the mission if we if you were starting to get lost the federation would send help to guide you back so it's literally impossible to get lost on earth now but now we're helping the souls that are on earth that have been continuously incarnating on earth that are trapped either by the archon like enslaving souls talk about that how they've used earth to enslave souls and um essentially how these souls got they they just forgot their their beingness um i'm thinking about the whole enslaving souls and things i want you to remember that earth is what they call a library planet so any being can put their um they could do experiments here. They could put their DNA here. It's basically a library, literally a library planet. So it holds the DNA of people or beings from all across the galaxy. Beings just come put their DNA here and let it do its thing. That's what a library planet is. But the Archon have taken advantage of that. They've been here for a few thousand years. Yes, they've been here during the dinosaurs, but that's when they were using the library planet to develop their own beings. So the dinosaurs were them developing, like we call smaller versions of ourselves thing they call them. Um, just more, lack of a better word, primitive versions of themselves and develop a, a species that were advanced. So they did develop what they call, because we, have, we don't have a better word for it, dinosaurians, which are advanced beings that were dinosaurs but get off the planet. And now they're out there and they still see Earth as their home. So they want to take it back. So do you see what I mean by the politics? It's very political. They're like, this is our planet. Well, no, it's the library planet, right? So the asteroid came, wiped it clean, and started something new, a new cycle of growth, which was led to humans. But of course, the Archon are like, this is our planet. We want it. So they've enslaved it for a few thousand years. But we're here. We're here to clean it up. So everything's going to be cleaned up soon. So now that that makes more sense... Let's look at 40. Jesus is the archetype of the fourth density. Learns the lessons of light and wisdom. It's the in-between. So you're learning this, the fifth density. So Jesus was showing people how to, basically what the fifth density essence is, going back to this. So there are beings that live in the fourth density as we live in the third density. We're talking spirit, any type of spirits. Um, Fae, for example, like we talked about, um, a lot of extraterrestrials, and there's, there's lots more, but you already know, they like to stay there. Then we have, uh, welcome Marissa. <laughs> okay, you just mute yourself, so then we don't hear everything going on around you. 
Okay. I'm glad you're here, by the way. Okay. And I'm looking at I'm looking at what I feel like I'm with that. Are you still calling me? I can hear you calling me. I can still hear you. Okay, now, now I can. Now I can. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. That's Marissa, by the way. <laughs> okay. So, where was I? Okay, we were talking about the four density. So, Earth has been in four density vibration since 2012. So, everybody is very much focused on, like, they're in the point where they're like, oh, spirits are real. Energy is real. And we're here, like, yeah like this is basic to us this is kindergarten stuff like this is a tuesday we're like yeah this is real but humans that were lost in the lower densities are like whoa oh my god right so i also want you to be aware that earth-based souls are always not from earth meaning that they have experience elsewhere but came to earth and either been staying here a long time or they got trapped like they got stuck here but like for example you guys know dr dawn which is my galactic mother she has been on earth for many incarnations but she's been doing assignment work like she's always been here doing work so that's why i look up to her because she has um actual experience here on earth me i'm this is my first time here so and she always she always makes fun of me my both my parents always make fun of me for that they're like yeah this is your first time on earth and they always are like having to it's always like we're always studying humans and studying earth and that's because this is our first time here almost all of us is our first time here but we have lots of wisdom and strength and power from elsewhere in the galaxy we're just in a fresh planet that we're like damn how did they, how does this planet work we're trying to figure it out to help them that's it so you're going to notice beings or souls that have been on earth for a long time or have been doing they're part of the gfl and been doing work on earth for a long time it's almost like you have a high respect for them you're like damn you've been doing this shit for like years and i'm just fresh here but it was all planned out a lot of them they're like okay i'll go on earth in uh 500 years before you to set things up yes i gotta go through this and that but you're gonna come when we need you which is now so they need us now okay let's go to the fifth density Oh, let's wait. Let me go back to four density real quick as a chemical slash light body, right? So you could still have a physical body, um, but you are astral. So like how the fairies were physical and then they're like, yeah, you know what? Let's like they do all their spirit work. They they protect nature and all of that, but they couldn't live alongside humans on the same density because they were too low. They're like, all right, we out. So they decided to stay in the four density and only incarnate like that. But they're just as real. They're still doing the same thing they do, just not physically. So, remember these are our awarenesses. Okay? Five or fifth density awareness. The Buddha is the archetype of 5D awareness. Notice they're always so peaceful at one. They know all their incarnations. Being so at peace is just... Uh, um, what's it called? It's basically, for lack of a better word, like a symptom. So, oh wait, let me let me read some of these comments real quick. Dr. Don is built different. So many lives on this ghetto-ass planet. <laughs> you already know it. This is Robbie's second time on Earth. Already we got higher respect for Robbie. I'm like, damn, you've been here. Uh, Zara said, can you send us those pictures? For sure. I have them in a folder so I can... um. Just remind me and I'll put them in here after so you guys can have them. Um, I'm an old soul. I think this might be my last time here. This is going to be our first time. Most of us is our first time here and our, our last time. You know what? I'm saying it like that because this is, for example, for me, this is going to be my new home planet. And I'm going to, this is going to always be my new home planet while it's in 5d and going higher but i'm still gonna have my presence in the galaxy and stuff like that so some of you are gonna consider earth your new home especially if you're from planet avalon 
it's like you're going to see Earth as your new home because it's so similar to home. But you're still galactic, right? Humans are still going to be very connected. Now they're going to be dispersing the galaxy. Like they're going to want to sell their art out to galactic beings. They're going to want to do work in the galaxy. So it's not like they're trapped on a planet now. They have, they could go anywhere. So I'm excited about that. So you, this may be, um, I actually don't know if I want to have this body or like have another human body after this one or a Terran body, or if I want to go to my Lyran body, not quite sure because when you have a human body and you have a, like whatever home planet you have, your physical body is built so that you're connected easily to the planet. So if this is my new home planet, I'll probably still have a human body or a hybrid, like half human, physically hybrid, half human, half old Lyran planet body. We'll see. That's a really good question. Um, okay, let's stick. Let's go back to the fifth density we were talking about. So the Buddha is the archetype, learns to perf perfectly balance love and light. Because, again, you're getting way closer to the source. And learns how to serve without basically self-sacrifice. Has a body of pure light, 50 million year cycle. So, again, you see, we've been... The dinosaurs were around 65 million years ago. And the Lyran Wars were a bit before that. So, as you can see... All beings have a connection to Earth in some form or use Earth for something. As Lyrans, we loved, we came to Earth as like a colony. We were like, okay, we need to rebuild ourselves. And then we went back out. So we already have a deep connection to Earth. Helped us out a lot. <coughs> Regather ourselves. So you can see here, it talks about a 50 million year life cycle. All of us in here have been alive a lot longer than that. Or our souls have been in this universe a lot longer than that so again that's why a lot of you may have those angelic lives we call angelic quotations they're just very pure light because you again are from these higher densities but you're experiencing the lower ones so fifth densities again fifth density is a, a thursday you know that's like nothing um but remember, you're rebuilding that remembrance again. Once you remember, you're like, oh, okay. But the human souls, the human-based souls that have been out of 5D a lot longer, they're like, okay, we got to get in this 5D thing again. And they got to build it up. So that's why they need you. Because you have a lot more experience. Human, <laughs> humans used to be like higher because of Atlantis, Lemuria. Mm -hmm. But that's and true. Egypt and Sumer. But they have fallen due to the Archon and Mark the Pig. So as you can see, some of you will remember your lifetimes in Atlantis or Lemuria. And you'll always remember its destruction and how the Archon destroyed it. They wanted Earth as their own. So whole political dynamics. And they keep you'll keep hearing them say, this is our planet. And you're like, no, it's not. Technically, it is. But technically, it's also our planet, too. Because also the solar system is considered Galactic Federation territory um, because of the war we fought here. So it's our territory. We have enough power to remove the Archon from Earth and their time is up. You see the celebrities, they're falling apart. They're struggling to keep everybody looking at them and their power and all of that. They're falling apart because the new age is coming in and new celebrities like y'all are coming in. So the whole old dynamics falling apart, but they're trying to keep the lid on as long as possible, even though they know it's going to go away. Um, there's something else I wanted to say related to that. I forget what it was, but Archon are trying to stop what they can. Oh yeah, that was it. So when you talk with the Federation, they'll make it known that we could remove the, the Archon's presence on Earth in this lifetime in max max of 2027 remember 2028 um but we the galactic federation doesn't have enough power to remove their presence from the galaxy because of what they've done here so we have the law of non-interference 
if humans sign a contract with the archon reptilians we're like can't we can't help you we'll, we'll help you we'll send some of our souls to help fight on the ground and all that and we're here we're talking with some of the governments and all that they're making plans but we cannot just come in and stop everything because the law of non-interference we let humans grow on their own so that's like elsewhere so it's like elsewhere we we can't infiltrate because we have those laws that we set in place okay so you'll also notice you live by that law of non-interference when you're doing assignments you have someone that is an assignment or you're on a mission and it's like your guides are like don't or their guides are telling you don't tell them this but plant this seed and then when that seed grows enough then you talk to them about this so some assignments it takes long to get them it's like they're in 3d 4d and then they're in 4d and then they're 4d 5d and then they're 5d that takes you some time but if you just run in and say oh here you go this is and that it's like you didn't let them grow on their own and sometimes they run from it so it's never going to work out if you force things yeah about what i'm gonna say is about that is um also like we could sign a contract with the archon <laughs> but most humans aren't even aware and like most humans are like oh hee hee fortnite yeah bombastic side eye <laughs> criminal <laughs> offensive i'm telling you bro eye. the only ones that okay this is where it gets political again bro because some governments working with the gfl like all right we want to we want it to be 5d earth and some governments they've signed with the archon they work with archon either they're Slay! unaware or they're enslaved Slay! it all depends on the government or the beings working with them but that's why we're here we're on the ground um you know what we'll, we'll go into six density and seven density as well so some of you that have or remember at this moment that you were an archangel because you were six density so they turned backwards in time to serve its past selves and as the higher self so your higher self is, is you learns the lessons of foreverness and eternity has a body of pure light and is usually here for 75 million years or so and you know you've been alive long a lot longer than this all of us so you know that you're probably seven density at this point seven density is at one with all having no memory no identity no past or future but existing in the all you basically merged with source again serves as a teachers to the higher selves in the sixth density one foot in time and one foot in eternity enters a black hole at the end of the seventh density and most souls after this we don't really know what's what happens there this is where it gets way beyond we're like whoa once the past octave or universe has absorbed into itself through the black hole of the great central sun a new octave begins um, and this starts with the Big Bang coming out of a white hole, expanding space and time. Mm -hmm. And that's what the whole, uh, what do they call the Big Bang theory is. So again, that's real, but they don't understand fully what that actually is. Okay, the, bi the Big Bang is just the physical manifestation of, of the new octave, like the start of space and time. That's all human scientists really got. But you know they got more, but they got to reveal it to humans slow. Slow. And they ask for our help. That's why we're here. Okay. Let me look at some of the questions now, and then we'll go to the next uh, picture. And we'll talk about soul a little bit more, but you could go ahead and ask questions now, just in case I skipped over anything that you guys want to touch on. In Gus asked, is the Big Bang when the spirit um, the spirit realms created the material world? Essentially, yeah. You could consider it that. Of course, you know there's more details and more scientific understandings, but yes, simply, yeah. We do not need to be aware uh, if the government signed contracts. We gave the power to those people in governments, and if they sign a contract, it is legal in universe's eyes, right? It's like you said, you accepted, you said, I 
even though they, they're unaware of the deep implications of the contract they said all right we agree to this and that's why the archon are smiling and they like that they're like all right we could we could chess move the galactic federation in the galaxy through this um my way of like handling are the law of non-interferences by subconsciously implanting the idea about ets and souls like in my school they said ghetto fucking fortnite so then i put my bitmoji as a gray to subconsciously implant it or maybe in science class they asked to make the perfect animal and i created a reptilian gray hybrid it's subconscious that is incredibly smart look at that see some of your assignments that's all you got to do you could look for anywhere where you could slide in some information or subconscious knowledge like we talked about in the meeting before this how the govern what is it the galactic federation gave us the go to start to speak what we actually are like you could go ahead and start telling people i work for the galactic federation and things like that but um yes they may not fully understand but we, we got the go in my class there's like a joke that mark zuckerberg is a lizard so i kind of keep saying that to implant it too you see that that's right away you're preparing humans for the greater truth and soon once everything is aware they're like whoa i mean stavros told us about this already or uh they told us about this already and then you're again we talk about taking off your mask you're gonna be like yep because i work for the gfl i told y'all <laughs> so beautiful i like this question robbie what about dark beings density Fourth, the fourth density is where where darkness, that's the last area darkness could exist. So that is where we face the dark beings or Archon reptilians or Archon greys, Archon humans, all of that stuff. Because the fourth density, once you get to the fifth density, you have to leave behind the darkness. Or not the darkness, you have to leave behind lower vibrations. Which is why in the other picture, we have, um, we have the pyramid. Let me stream that again. So that's why it's like the pyramid ends there because that's where that's where duality has gone. You realize you get to the fifth density and you realize, you know, it's all the same thing. Light, dark, darkness is just lack of light. Right. So duality disappears. And if you want to go to the fifth density, you have to abandon your lower vibration because you're going closer to source. So that, that's why we call it the middle ground, because um, the middle ground is it's like, oh, OK, you want to go up here? Well, you got to leave behind that dark and the dark beings are like, no, nah, I want to rule. I want to take over their program by the dark consciousness that invaded this galaxy, labeling it as a broken galaxy, as you guys know. So the dark consciousness came in and said all right and basically chose the reptilians as the gateway to that which is why a lot of people consider reptilians dark just like how people on earth consider like especially people of color they're like oh it's the white man it's the white man that did it nah they were used for the greater darker agenda so no more oh oh look what the black people are doing look what the white people are doing look what the reptilians are doing no we realize now it's not based on how you look it's based on the consciousness which is what they're talking about with the war, the war on consciousness happening on Earth or that happened in Orion and Lyra. This has been happening for millions and millions and millions of years. We've been doing this for a long ass time. They called upon the warriors, the greatest warriors and the greatest teachers in the galaxy and in the universe to come to Earth. That is y'all. Okay, the greatest are on Earth now. And you're just realizing who you were again because you realize you had to realize again. So all of you, 5D will be a Tuesday, but you got to slowly, you're going to be in and out a bit. Sometimes you're going to get lost in the 3D again, and then you're going to go back to 5D. And you'll notice when you're in 5D, everything is just light and happy because you're aware no matter what happens, this is my video game character. Jumping in a game like when you play Sims and it's like the Sim forgets, like if imagine you were had the, the, the what are they called the r the rv not the rv the vr yeah, yeah thank you <laughs> and so it's like you forget you have the vr on and you think you're the game character 
but you are the person that's jumping in the VR and you're you're in the game saying, guys, you know, you're just a soul here, right? You know, you're just the playing the game. And they're all like, well, what are you talking about? And you're helping them awaken and realize you're in the VR. I like that example a lot. That makes me hype. Okay, let's read some more questions. The vibration of music has changed to a lower one. Mm -hmm. There's a war. Listen, everything that's happening on Earth is a war on consciousness. Like celebrities that have sold their soul. You know what that's about. They basically were, it's Archon went up to them. Oh, I want, can I give you this example? You guys know, um, um, like Bad Baby or Catch Me Outside Girl or the one guy that does, um, his name is Jake Doherty. Um, and the Island Boys and all that stuff. And you see how they were on, um, how they were on that one show, Dr. Phil. So this is how the Archon work. They'll be on the show and you see what they're doing wrong. You're like, why are they famous now when they were, all that dark thing was happening? But that's what happens is like they're put in the rear view. They're shown and the Archon sees them and it's like, bro, we, if we get them, we're good. We could hype up our agenda to make humans dark and they basically get them. So now they're famous. They offer them money and fame as long as they support their agenda. That's how it works. The girl is literally an Illuminati. Yep. It's all, it's all getting, see, it's all getting basic knowledge now. Like we know the Illuminati is real. Okay. We see the reptilians and the Archon, what they're doing. It's all part of the plan. So you'll see any of those people that were troubled kids, like on Dr. Phil. Now they're extremely famous doing the same shit, but they're allowed to do it. The Archon said, we'll let you do what the hell you want, but um, you have to do this and that. And we'll let you know all this stuff but you gotta we'll give you money but you gotta support this and they're like all right deal some of them don't they don't even know what the hell they're doing they're just clouded by money and fame like they when you're selling their soul. like what xx and passion i think his name i heard his story like he sold his stuff but then he like decided to stop following the rules and that what and then that's what you know yep and they clipped him that's how it's gonna be so you guys, you guys work for the GFL, so you don't got to worry about getting clipped because if, if you, if they were to remove you from the earth physically, they'd be in big trouble from the Galactic Federation. But then that's, nobody wants trouble with the GFL, especially on earth. They don't have enough power. So they're like, let's just keep the lid on humans as long as possible. Keep our power as long as possible. And we will see how that goes. So they're trailing it, trailing it, but we're fighting and we're, we're winning. We're going to win. It's a matter of when and how it's going to lay out. Right? So no matter what, all of you are going to be really, really well known. You guys are the new celebrities. It's interesting because it's not the celebrity term of like, in, in 3D, the agenda they want, it's all ego. It's all ego. It's like, you're going to have money. You're going to have fame. Everybody's going to know who you are. But when you're in soul, you're like, that's responsibility. It goes from clout to responsibility. If I'm a leader... That means I have the responsibility of taking care of the people, cleaning up the mess that's happened on the planet. The planet only does as good as I'm doing. That is the responsibility of being a leader. But in ego, it's like, I run shit. I do this. It's all self-serving. Service to others versus service to self. See how it's making more mathematical sense? So things are start you're starting to see how it actually works, how everything's correlated. All of us, look at that. Ash said, I love leadership responsibility. That is who we are. We all either lead a planet or we have some sort of leadership role in the galaxy or we're like the police of the universe. Like if you're an archangel, like a lot, like, um, like for example, Zach um, or Ange, it's like you've operated a lot as like a police, but we all know each other. We're all like, oh, like for example, I, I'm a commander of the Galactic Federation. So I'd be like, oh, there's shit going on over here. I would contact Ange. I'd be like, Ange, what's going on with this? Can you send some people over? And then some of you, like, for example, Starlight, I'm calling you out. You're one of those that'd be like, I'll go. I'll go to that planet. So you see how it's important? It's like we have the people 
who have different roles it's like commanders are like watching over everything and then we have the guards or like the the star seeds the warriors that will go down and do it and so we have these um roles but humans they've egoized it so it's like oh you're you're a troop you're one of the troops you're not as good as the generals that's extremely primitive it's based on responsibility how are capable are you of because some people they're like i don't want to be a commander i don't want to have all that responsibility i just want to fight and help protect people so then they become a warrior that incarnates on the planet this is what i mean by ego and soul again you're just everything is shifting perspective like you go ahead like when you're like a commando admiral or whatever like it seems cool at first but it is actually really hard like when it was in orion maybe some of you remember like the wars like i was in the offensive side of the admiral and it was crazy because i had to be like so the like the troops they would do like the little fight and i had to like make big decisions mm -hmm. literally what the generals or the commanders they they had to view everything and then they commanders needed others to make things done so for example if you were a commander or you are a commander in the galactic federation you're on earth now it's like you still have that commander role here you're commanding the other star seeds which are the same as you it's like listen i have the mind like this is why i want you guys watching um like uh game of thrones it's like you have the mind for leadership you have the awareness of everything and you're connected to the planet you know what needs to be done but you can't do everything yourself you need people who are going to do some of the work for you who it's like okay we need more food over in china for example or let's go galactic we need more consciousness awareness raising in sirius b planet planet archie something random right <laughs> and i'm as a commander i'm like oh shit we need some more help over there i would contact someone and be like look Aaliyah, can you do you know people or can you command your army to go over to sirius and go to that planet and help the wolf beings out and Aaliyah would be like yes i'm on it all right and then she would go there and she would get her people her army and they would go and then they would up she would update me and be like okay it's going well but we need some more angelic help and i'd be like i'm on it don't worry and i'll contact Ange and be like can you send some angels over here so i'm saying this because i want you to know more in depth this is getting you to see the 5d essence of how we're all gonna be um, we did face before some ego where people were like, I want to be a guard or I want to be this. And now that's disappearing because people are like, they sat down and like, damn, do I actually want the responsibility of teaching 80 people at once? Or do I just want to protect the teachers so that they could teach well and I'll fight off any low vibrational beings that are watching or are bugging or are sending spies and whatever it is. Right. So it's all just based on what your skills are. I love this too. Isn't this amazing? Astral Jail rules. Yes. You know what, Robbie? Do you remember? Um, <laughs> do you remember the planet that you use as a slave? Or not slave planet. My bad. A uh, jail planet, and you enslaved this one giant dragon that um, that I finally defeat, and I sent it to you. I remember that was a big dragon that. Um, long story short was a dragon i fought in lyra and if you guys you guys know metroid right and how metroid was always fighting this dragon it's just like that and i was like i finally defeat this dragon after so many lifetimes and i was like robbie i got him what what do we do now and she was like oh i'm gonna put him on this slave or this planet to make him become aware and he's still on that planet to this day so it'd be like that. And then they raise in consciousness and then they leave the planet. So it's like, you're, they're like, Robbie was like, you're going to stay on this damn planet until you raise in consciousness or we're going to put you to soul death. And soul death is basically putting your soul back in source, source forcefully. 
So then you realize the greater truth and all that and you're back in source. Raising consciousness is like we're giving you the time to raise and get up there. And if they can't, we're like, all right, we got to put you to soul death. Some of your heinous crimes, it's like you're not going to raise the consciousness. You out. What is soul death like? It is like, um, okay, look at it like water. You know when you have a cup of water and you pour the water out in a bowl and now you pour some of that water into another cup. So like I pour some of this water in my hand, right? It's just like that. A little bit of water in my hand. This is a soul. When I put you to soul death, I put you forcefully back in the bowl. So now you are source, right? You're back when who you are. That is what it's like when we're raising consciousness and we're getting back to the 12th density and you're a six or seven density being, you're, you're getting closer to source, merging back with that. The collective consciousness. I heard you. Yes. So actually uh, I would, I would uh, like to say like, imagine when a, <laughs> when a soul gets a uh, soul death sentence, we actually give the soul lots of time to heal, and if they are still not choosing to heal, then uh, still after lots of time, the angelic corp decides decides that uh, the soul that must must be done. And when we do, do that, it's like imagine like this soul's energy turns into particles and goes back to the creation of the souls. And with these like energy particles. Uh, other souls gets created, you know, because all uh, souls have both positive and negative energies. So you can imagine like that. So if a soul gets soul death, um, they don't re reincarnate, incarnate again. The lineage ends, basically. I love how you brought that up. If you guys watch the movie Soul, and see you later, Rena. Thank you for coming. If you guys watch the movie Soul, it's showing you the birth of souls and how young they are. And then there's old souls. All that, you guys are the old souls. You've been doing this for a long ass time. You're like, yeah, I've been there, done that. You guys have the experience. Like, if you wanna, souls, they're like, if we wanna experience lower vibrations, we have to jump in a physical vessel that will allow us to experience lower energies. So, when you go back to the fifth density, that's like the, that's the regular area. That's like, okay, all souls are here. All souls go there when they die. And so you're there and then you're like, oh, I want to, I still want more experience in the physical. I still have more to learn about the universe and about low energy. All That's all about learning. I need to learn more. So then you keep, you either create a fourth density body or a third density body. And that allows your soul to experience those things because the soul can't just jump in because it's too bright. It's too high vibrational to experience just being in the third density it has to jump in a vessel that will allow just like if you want to like jumping in a car like oh i want to go fast oh let me jump in a car and you do that just like that i think some of you should watch the movie soul i love the birthing of souls and how they go in different classrooms to like um get different things and traits so basically, they go in those classrooms and they're getting incarnations. They're going on different plants, incarnating, and then they come out and they're different. It's because they have different experience as a soul. But that's perfect segue into ego. Because your ego is all of your past lives. I say, oh, I'm 90% Lyran and 10% Draconian. That's my soul's experience in the galaxy. 90% of my experiences were as a Lyran. And 10% were as a Draco being. So I have those. Some of you, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm like 60% Syrian, 10% Pleiadian, whatever, whatever. You have all those. That's because those are your experiences. So I think it's cool you guys have experience as like, for example, Syrians or, or Andromedans and all that stuff. Because some of us, we don't have those experiences. But we have other experiences, which is why we unify. Because we can mix our experiences together to help all so that is why we're cool the whole dynamic of us working together is extremely cool so i want you to look at literally all your past lives as the ego those are the video game characters you've played 
yep like for example me yep i was a warrior i was a bounty hunter and as a commander of the galactic federation still am but that's just my experience who my ego is my soul my soul is source the universe what makes up everything source i like to call it so you see what i'm saying but that's why they're saying don't abandon the ego you raise above the ego so that's why you're always going to be happy no matter what dark shit happens to you in life you're always happy you're like damn i'm getting another experience let's go or oh this is tough but i'm so grateful to be on earth i'm helping the humans and i'm learning a lot so you know how many souls want to incarnate on earth there's a lineup and you probably hear that a lot like from dolores cannon there's a lineup of souls but i hit the most powerful first i heard like i heard that the thing is that past lives are ego are star seeds and like um, so I heard like from the TikTok or YouTuber Ari Malo, he said about the, like I asked, are you a starseed on his streams? And he said, well, uh, you, he said, I know you are one, but they're just um, egos or like they're just avatars. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So now you're a human. The government calls us alien human hybrids form of alien human hybrids that's why they're watching all of us real close you guys already been known that and you've seen evidence of that that's because they know you're they call you hybrids and but you are really you're really just a human you're having the experience as a human but you're still so aligned and you're you're getting aligned back again as you're supposed to which means you are that et but you have a human vessel which is why they call it an alien human hybrid so it is your ego, but it's still your soul's experience, which is why if you were to abandon it, you're abandoning all your soul's experience. So never focus on killing the ego or abandoning the ego. Only rise above it and have awareness of it. You're like, oh, I remember incarnating as this or as that, but that's not who I am. That is just my experience. Do you see? So you could still say, oh, I'm a Lyran or um, I'm this and I'm that. But you're still in awareness of that's just my experience. Oh, I like this question. Um, Marissa asked Vinny, what was your first demon attack? The first one that I could think of was the one of, um, at least that I was aware of was a demon attack, was the one when I opened my portal in my room. And I was like, okay, whatever wants to come through, come through. And then that demon came through and messed around with my dream. And then when I woke up, it walked. I heard footsteps walk away from my bed and into the mirror. And that, that was the day I was like, oh shit, this is real. And the other one that was most potent was the reptilian one I always talk about. The first reptilian encounter I had where I was testing it out. I wanted to see what happens if I have, and you know, I'm being, I'm giving you guys blatant truth, sexual intercourse with a reptilian, literal shape-shifted reptilian being, which you guys know about that story. That was the most potent one that changed my life. So yeah. from then on, yeah, those are my two most, uh, my two first demon attacks that I was aware of at least. Why, like, for everyone wondering, like, you know, when you see, like, why is it seven density, seven chakras, and like in media, seven dragon ball, seven chaos emerald, seven deadly sins, seven heavenly gifts, like, what's that? I like how you word that house like the chakras like the seven seven chakras seven like literally the densities are just the chakras of the planet we are just as the cells in our body have consciousness and they're living their life and there's different chakras like different energies that circle within these areas we call chakras and we the whole goal is to get them to flow the energy to flow within them right it's the same so thing with the density seven? Um, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. That's that's very advanced um, psionics that I don't understand yet fully. But it goes from seven. It's there's actually twelve, but the seven is where, like the Federation always tells me, seven is where like, it's almost like the individual starts to disappear. You start to mesh with other souls. So I'm not quite sure how the dynamic works. When they tell me and they give me briefings. I'm still like, whoa, that's 
just a little too much right now. Let's just focus on this stuff. <laughs> um, there's something I was gonna say. I forget what it was. But uh Marissa asked, Cash, have you ever felt like you failed a mission and you were really sad? Shark was one of them. We talked about that before. Shark boy. And um Honestly, no. I always was I would always follow orders on like how to help a specific person. Their guides would always I would always follow the list there were times where i'd be like oh what if i tell them something that they tell me not to tell them and then it throws them off track so i'm like all right i'm listening when they say don't tell them certain things like when i do sessions with y'all and, and i'm like i can't tell y'all it literally would throw you off track so um essentially i have had ones where it was almost failed the my first ever failed one is shark that you guys know about but like Macklin said, you didn't really fail it. You're just gonna come back, of course. But it pissed me off because um, they'll let me know when people are incredibly important. So like my mission yesterday, where um I was in Burlington and I was doing sessions for a whole lot of star seeds physically, and um one lady, the guides, her guides told me focus on her more. And when someone is really important they'll let me see orbs around them. Like I'll literally see flashes of light that I look directly at that are above their head and moving around. But they don't look like orbs. They look like dents in the universe, I call it. That's the only way I could call it. It's like a dent in the universe and it's a certain color and it like moves. And it's like the universe is dent. That's the only way to explain. It's like a dent. And so um, for the one girl, for Shark, I was seeing those. So when it was happening, I was like, okay, this Syrian boy, you guys want me to protect, obviously. And I would see the orbs around his head. And I was like, okay, no, he's really important. And then, of course, he had the reptilian dad. You guys know all about that now. It's so basically, they got him. But the other girl who's being attacked by reptilians yesterday, um, one of my big assignments, she's really important. I was having a session with her for like three hours. And I would continuously see the orbs over her head. So I was like, okay, I know that's always a sign. That's how they let me know this person is important. And the more we talked, the more I was like, damn, you're, you're incredibly powerful and needed. Um, and, and we did talk about when you have a failed assignment, not to get too upset. Because love will always find a way. And the Galactic Federation will always um, start setting things up. For you to get back in their life again or they'll be sent back to you whatever it is you never really failed but i still we call it that because it's like we didn't complete the assignment at that time or complete the mission as we wanted yeah. it to go it was laying out <laughs> yeah so like um so because you didn't fail it it's just it's not finished <laughs> it's, it's like yeah. there has to be things that happen in between before he can you can finish your assignment with him. He has to experience things in between. Mm -hmm. It's like a so, discontinuation. But like, I'm glad you mentioned that because that, that was something I needed to hear too. Because I was like, I don't know why this happened. It was supposed to be like this. And then Macklin put me in awareness. She's like, look, you're, they told you that it's not failed because blank, blank. She laid it out to me and then it made sense. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So now I have to keep putting that in my head. And I have to teach you all that too. That was a big lesson for me. And I knew that was a lesson for me then to teach all the others. And I realized that's a big thing as for any of you that are commanders or going to be commander um, in any way, you're going to realize you go through a lot of things first to teach others or you get all these briefings and then you're like, whoa. And then you go, you got to go teach others. That's a big part of being um, a leader, no matter where you're at, whether you're a teacher commander general no matter what it's gonna be like that in some sort of level for sure oh and thank you marissa i appreciate you symbols and signs will permeate through all timelines to maintain an order and help with alignment wow i like the way you said that wow eat it up literally it's just like that you know the the federation speaks to you through 
uh, symbolisms big time or um, telepathic messaging, uh, whatever it is. Like people be like, oh, well, when you're an agent of the government, you have high end technology. We don't need high end technology. Our high end technology is this, our soul. This is another level of governance that everybody's learning. So anytime you want a briefing, you literally just got to ask, can you guys give me a briefing about reptilians? And then they're going to give you telepathic information. And then they're probably going to start sending you videos. Like you just start scrolling somewhere or you type up um, reptilians and then they lead you to a page that gives you more insight. You're like, thank you guys. Thank you. So it's always going to happen like that. And then you're going to see numbers. Like you see one, one, one all around the reptilian stuff. And you're like, okay, I'm in the right place, right time, whatnot. They're always going to tell you in some way. It's going to be cool. And like, um, Bavi, I had to message her uh, a few days ago, talking to her about the briefing I got from the GFL about the, the fairy genocide. I didn't know much about that. I didn't even know that was big of a thing until I went to the astral realm. And they gave me a whole briefing. But let me tell you how this briefing looks. They give you briefings in different ways, whether it's telepathic straight up, whether it's through a video they send you and then you see the numbers and stuff and you're like, wow, this is blind or a person in this way, they sent it to me in an astral travel session. So in this travel, they were hunting down people that were labeled as fairies or were connected to fairies and they put them in chairs and they would tie them down and they would torture them or they would kill them. And some of my friends were that are connected to fairies were there and they were all like, get her, she's a fairy. And she'd be like, no, listen, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. And they're like, kill her, kill her. And you just see the war on consciousness and all that. And it, I woke up in the morning. I was like, oh, my God. I had no idea there was an actual fairy genocide. And then I talked to fairy queens like Favi. And I'm like, bro, what is... I got so much about the fairy genocide. And then I talked to them. And other fairy queens or princesses or princes or whatever or kings and they're like yep there was a fairy genocide um i had experience in that and so then i'm learning from the briefings and then getting insight from the people that have actually experienced it so it depends on where you are and who you are you'll get briefings in very different ways but that's why you're raising in consciousness because you're learning the ways they're giving it to you so you guys ask how do you know all this stuff about each and every one of us well I tell you, especially when we're doing a session, they give me a piece of paper on my left. They tell you who you are, where you're going, your strengths and your weaknesses, and all of that, and what your challenges you're going to be facing in these next few times. And so I'm supposed to have that awareness and be able to know that that's part of my job. But I get those and I have to experience it as that's part of my job. So do you see what I mean by as a commander? It's like as a commander, a general whatever or as any type of leader you get these harder um you realize how they give you things and you accept it and then you it's like you're studying the science of it the psionics we call it how the whole spiritual aspect works because you get the messages and then you go about your way so they give me the piece of paper but it's not literally a piece of paper i just call it that for people to understand it's all an energetic um briefing so they just give it to me so it's all in my head. So I'll be like, oh, so I see you're in the fairies. And like, how do you? And I'm like, because they gave me a whole briefing about you already. So they, they'll always, you especially, all of you have that ability to do that. It's just up to you as if you want to have that, that responsibility. Do you see what I'm saying? So do you want to be able to know everything about everyone 24 seven? Do you want to, or do you not want to have that? You just want to be the protector and maybe someone's guides come to you and you send, uh, you astral project or you send some astral army over there, right? Depends on what, how, what role do you want to play? Because you could do anything. You could be in my place if you want, but do you want to be in that place? You could be in Favi's spot, but do you want to be in that place? See what I'm saying? Cash, what was your first mission? Ooh, my first one. Um, I remember it was, it was actually a party. So it was a bush party. You know, I, I live in a country town, bush party. So 
um they were like yo cash why don't you come out to the party and the federation looked at me they're like this they're like mission and i got excited i was like let's go so i walked up in the bush and they're playing the country music they're like yo you want a beer and i'm like all right and then so i got me a beer and what are the odds there was a chair and i sat in it by the fire and everybody was calling me king they're like you're like you're royal like you just like it's like you run the place really what i was doing is i was sitting there and i was analyzing and i was astrally having analysis and i was realizing who had archon on them who had but i wasn't as advanced and i was just like okay who has dark beings on them and so i was like okay i was analyzing and then i heard a bell in my head and it's weird because they lay out like a it's almost like it's like in a video game where they're leading you to your mission. It was like that. And they were like, go over to the train track. Someone needs you. And I looked over. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, I got to go. I was like, hold my beer. I got to go. So I was going. And there was a kid crying on the train tracks. And I said, you're good. And right away, they were telling me. They're like, he broke up with his girlfriend. This is not happening. I was like, oh, I see you broke up with your girl. There's stuff going on. And he's like, how the fuck do you know that? And he was like baffled. I was like, I just know stuff I shouldn't. And I left it at that. And he's like, oh, I, I just, I can't believe this happened. Why would she cheat on me like that? And his guys were giving me all the information to give him. And I was seeing everything, like his life in his head. I was like, oh, she looks like this and like that. And he's like, yeah, are you psychic or something? I was like, don't worry about it. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you. And um, I was just giving him information from his guides. And then he texts me at the end of the day after the party. He's like, it's like you're an angel sent from heaven. You came at the right time, right place, and gave the right information. And that made me awaken. I was like, oh my God. So that was, I wasn't fully aware that I was an assignment. I was just, I was just excited to help people. And I was like, oh my God, they really did lay out everything for me and gave me everything. And from then on, I started going to parties all the time for mission work. And then it got when I had to, that was all training to get me ready for fighting the Archon Reptilians at the parks. And you guys know all about that. And so it was, it led me, I had to get those missions and assignments to get the bigger ones, get more training. I started to realize, okay, like the sparkles above people's head. I'm like, oh, if I see those, if I see those um, like dots and those sparkles floating and moving around, I know the spirits are saying, stick with them, stick with them. Or um, like I see it all the time in my room because my portal's always open. So I always see beings coming in and floating around. But um, I know they're important. And I've noticed it took me a few years to realize, okay, when there's orbs above people's head like that and they're everywhere, I'm like, I'm like fascinated. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Then I noticed they're always very important star seeds. So it took me a while to realize that. That's what I mean by studying. They have you studying your powers, studying how things work. So then you could master yourself and your power. It's kind of annoying, but that's why people like me are here. Because we're here to help guide you. So that you don't have to go through too... It doesn't have to be hard. It's like, I'm supposed to know everything about you, so you're on track. And I'm supposed to have a deep connection with y'all. So then when we're doing stuff around the planet, I could call upon you. So again, this is where the roles, the soul roles are coming into play. Study, read, learn, cross-reference, doubt, challenge, question everything. Literally. Work hard, play hard. Cash, what got you into spirit stuff? Don't know how to spell. <laughs> um, oh, I was always an empath in high school. In high school, I always could just tell things about people and I didn't know why. And I was hard in astral projection. As you guys know, I was obsessed with astral projection, even though it wasn't that popular yet. That's what the days where you're watching Ryan Cropper and all those people. I was obsessed. And I wanted to do it so bad. But I could always just know. I'd walk by people and I'd be like, I'd be like, I'm, I'm angry. And I'm like, I realized, I started to notice I'm picking up with people's energy. So I'd start, I would start testing it out. I'm like, can I feel people's energy? So I was like, I go to people and I'm like, I know you're upset because your mom yelled at you. And they're like, how do you know that? And then I was like, oh. And that's when I was mind blown. I like, I ran home. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, 
How did I do? How did I do that? And so I knew for a while in high school that I was an empath. I just didn't know how to harness it, what it meant. So grade 10, I stepped into that whole empath thing, understanding it. And then um, when high school ended, I was able to study consciousness way more and get into all of this psionics. And so then I was, I was always getting seizures too. Like I told you guys how I would get seizures every month. Um, and I'd always wake up and just have new abilities or have understandings of things. And people would always tell me, you're more mature. You, It's like you, how do you have these abilities? It's like you're magical. And I'm like, I don't know. Like I just have the seizures and I realized those were upgrades, which is actually pretty common in the spiritual community where you get upgrades and they started as panic attacks. And then they leave because it's so much your body overloads. So you have a seizure and the doctors are always tell me your brain is really upgrading and they're supposed to be downgrading, but whatever's happening, your brain's upgrading. So then I realized, Okay, more confirmation, upgrades. And then I realized I was getting those upgrades because I was supposed to help gather the star seeds together and have that role where I'm a stable base for them so we could all do this together. So that's when I started to realize my role. I was like, how come I'm, how come y'all are making me get these upgrades real quick? What is my purpose? And then now we're here. And I'm like, okay, makes total sense. So same with y'all. It's like you're led, you're led to consciousness and then you're led some way. And then you're like, I don't understand why. And then now you're in your role and you're like, oh, I'm meant to be a protector. I'm meant to be a teacher or, or leader. It all just makes sense after. Empathy has been one of the most conflicting things I had to investigate. You know what? How about we do, we do, um, a class on empaths because that was the hardest shit for me to master even now i'm still learning the energetic language i would be considered advanced but that's just because i've been doing it for a while but even me i'm still learning a lot so it's that's why i call it the energetic language because you're just learning the language of energy so you're you may read energy and you don't understand what that means but then you realize later oh my god that meant that they were a backstabber then when you feel that energy in the future, like you go and you meet someone and you feel that energy, you're like, I know you're a backstabber. And then you warn people and then people get backstabbed by them and you're like, I told you. And they're like, how'd you know that? It's in their energy. It's right there. The energetic language. So studying the energetic language and you, you literally have to learn as you go. You go everywhere and you're like, what is that energy? Hmm. Guys, can you help me out a little bit? Give me some clues. And then you start to master it. Uh, I would used to hear stuff all the time. Like when I was Which little. Was well, you said you used to study it when you were little like that? No, I used to hear stuff when I was little. So my mom would say, like, as a little story, scary story time, like, back at my dad's house, and they would be and then we'd say, um, there's a goblin or, like, an F or whatever in the basement. Oh. And like I remember, I would always sleep with the light on. Yeah. And I would always hear bangs. I thought it was like, um, oh yeah, it might have been inside the wall. Like, but then now, like when I'm old, I realize I might have been hearing shit. <laughs> yeah, you was. And there might have actually been spirits in my attic, and which also explains because there is a kind of a sad story between the house because someone. Um, unalived themselves, so who used to live in that? So, I mean, it kind of makes sense why I would always feel like these like scary, like vibes, low vibes. Mm -hmm. See, you now were already I aware when you were young, and now it makes sense. And you're like, okay, well, I've always been able to do it now, I could just master it now. But then, like a bit later, I started to lose my sensitivity. But now I'm getting it back again. Um, Marissa asked quick, how much guards do you have? You know what? When I awakened to my astral army, that was the craziest way, though, because I would go to readers. And this is while I was awakening more at the end of high school. And they were like, oh, my God, you're for sure a Lyran. And they would always say that you're for sure a Lyran. And I was like, I don't even know what the fuck that is. But I started to 
I remember it would just always hit home. And the first time someone told me that, I started crying. I was like, I don't even know what that is. And I don't know why I'm tearing up. And um, um, I would go to some readers and they'd be like, oh my God, you have a strong army. Like, it's scary. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, Dawn was one of the first. She was like, yeah, I was hesitant to talk to you because your army's scary. And she said that's how she knew right away that I was a commander because of that. And she's like, you could tell them to do anything and they'll do it. So now you guys know I send, that's part of what I do is I send astral guards and stuff. Um, and I have an astral army, but that's just part of um, my role as a soul here. And so a lot of you, almost all of you have an army. They'll just be a different size or different capabilities and whatever, right? So um, Don was like, whoa, your army's scary. You always have two royal guards standing behind you. And I always felt that. It was weird. And so that's, that awakened me to my role more. I was like, okay, I'm not just a Lyran or anything like that. I'm also a commander of some something. And they would, they would never tell me, they're like, we're not allowed to tell you, but you are going to realize your role. So now I'm here. And even now I'm still finding out more about myself. Oh, it's right here. Thank you for bringing this up. Don't forget to explain how to know if you're hearing yourself or channeling the Federation or guides. Okay. Now, when you... I got to pee so bad. Okay, let me say this real quick and then I'm going to go to the washroom real fast. Um, when... Okay, this is why they talk about clearing your mind sometimes and saying, oh, meditate and master having your mind blank. Because when you blank your mind, you could get information like that. Anything that pops into your head, you know it's from that. So um, it'll take you some time. <laughs> I'm about to go pee in a second, don't worry. But when, when it, you have to um, feel the energy. So feel the, feel the energy of what your thoughts feel like right now. Let's say when you're thinking on your own, what does it feel like? You notice it has an energy signature that's yours. But you also got to understand what that signature is. When something is, like you'll notice sometimes maybe things just pop in your head or you get visions that won't leave you alone. Or it's like um, you hear, it all depends on what your abilities, how you sense the astral. For me, it's very much energetic and a little bit and clairvoyant. So it's like, they speak to me all telepathically and energetically. So I'll, I'll sit there and I clear, I clear my whole energy, my mind. And I'm like, okay. And when I'm talking with them, I can feel where their guides are. Macklin, you're trying to kill me, bro. You're trying to kill me with that waterfall. <laughs> 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 but um, it's like... <laughs> it's, it's, not, that, it's that sibling, sibling play. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> But um, it's, it's like um, you right away, what's coming in your head, you notice it has a certain energy. And sometimes you'll notice it's past family members, like dead family members. They're standing in your head. They're really standing over here, but it's like you can see them in your head and they're talking to you and it's their energy. So then you're like, okay, oh. your mom's saying this. And then they're like, oh my God. And then you, they give you the confirmation that, yeah, you're right. Before you go and peek quickly, my clairvoyance is like I kind of get a visualization and I close my eyes like look up from my third eye and I get a visualization in my head see that's beautiful and like when you get clairaudience I recommend you like start saying your thoughts in your mind and like it can get so far to even playing music in your head and this is why Spotify is a waste of money <laughs> Yep, if you're if you have clear audience like that, music's always playing in your head. That's like me. Music's always playing in my head and I'm always having conversations or I'm watching a movie in my head. Maybe they're giving me briefings about something. Like it's always there's that's where my clairvoyance comes in play. I see everything in my head. Like it's a movie, literally like it's right there. And so if there's a being walking in, maybe I'll see a physical manifestation like a sparkle or like a shadow and then in my head, I see what the being is saying there. So I'm like, whoa, it looks like this, this, and that. And then, of course, it's like I mix all those traits together. And then um, that's how I give information to people. But you, some of people, it's like they're not good at feeling energy, but they just see. Like they see the being literally as it's a physical being. So you see what I mean by we're all very different in the way our abilities are. So 
you may hear us talk about certain things, but you'll go to another person. They're like, oh, I literally just hear the beings talking to me in my ear. I don't hear them. I hear them. So it, it's all very different in what your clairvoyance, your clairsentience, like and all that stuff is. Okay, me, let me run to the washroom so real have... quick. You could go ahead and talk a little bit. I'm going to run to the washroom real quick, and then we'll end this in 15 minutes because I do have some people over. I'll be back. Celebrate the time. I watched um, The Tide to Rise with my mom, and like we both had like clear cognizant, and we literally like predicted the end. And my mom made a theory. I don't want to spoil anything in case if you want to watch it, but like I have like precognition. Like when I went on the trampoline park, I was like, I was gonna see friends from my school, and I literally like just seen them. So how's everyone doing? I had one conversation with like a I guess he I assume he's a Buddhist on a Buddhist server and my mind is so empty that like by the time I stop talking it's just silence. <laughs> like <clears throat> Like what are your dominant like class and I don't even know my yet. You said dominant game. what? Oh. What was that? What are like your guys' dominant class senses? Uh, cognizance. I know. Like my yeah. used to be all audience a lot. Like I'd hear music in my head. I'd hear stuff in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. It runs in the family actually. Now, clear cognition also runs in my family. Mm -hmm. Like, we pre cognition type of clear cognition. Like, me and my mum, we predicted the ending for, like, have that show behind her eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a child, like, I was what? the one who I was, I would always used to say, uh, actually, actually, well, you know, actually, I was that guy. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> when like, I was young. When I was young, my mom didn't like watching. Well, <laughs> not my mom because she would too. But um, some of my family members didn't like watching movies with me when I was really, really young, because I would, I would like clairvoyantly see what was gonna happen. Bro, and I, like, I bet you because, like, I knew my visions were real, but I'm, I was still like learning that, like, you know, what it really was and stuff like that. I was only like seven, <laughs> so, uh, maybe six, and. <laughs> I would like predict the ending. <laughs> I'd be like, I bet this is gonna happen. They'd be like, hey, you always know, you always spoil it. <laughs> That's what my mom did, like when we were watching behind her eyes. And like, I also believed it, and it was, and it turned out to be true. Like, if anyone watched it, like the weird stuff. Me. My dad plain out said, "Muhammad, shut up." <laughs> Okay, you know what? I think we should um now to end this off. We should we can do another one on ego and soul if you guys want, just as like a refresher again because I know this kind of takes a bit to click. So if you guys want it, we could do another one. Our next class is gonna be on um we're gonna do the Galactic Federation and the plans for Earth and like the whole setup, and then we're gonna talk about psionics, which psionics is basically uh the new word for consciousness energy astral projection all that stuff um and then we will do one on this again but to end it off i want to talk about the roles again and as your role you're stepping into your role in the server which is really your role on earth and what you're doing on earth um i want to talk about some of what it's going to look like now that you're in a soul awareness of how powerful your role is or what your role is i'm getting a huge deja vu right now i was this this was Same. really really meant to happen likewise um Stavros asked if we could talk later i'll probably go live later but my nephew is over so um i'm gonna end this and i'm gonna get off for a bit and then you guys will see me go live like later tonight but um my nephew's gonna keep crying for me if i don't go with him for a little bit
go play with that baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> Stavros, me and you could talk. Monday is a full day for me. Um, let's do... Let, let's keep it divine timing. I think Wednesday will be good. Now, um, you know your nephew, I have a feeling he'll like start to get like in touch with the astral. Like I know he's gonna be start to see stuff and like leave his body or have vivid dreams. Just saying. Who? Your nephew. I don't know. I have this. He's a liar in for sure. He actually calls me dad. And everybody's like, how come he's calling you dad? And they think it's so random, but it's, um, I notice all Lyran kids, especially Lyran kids, they call me dad. Or all the Starcy kids in my town, they call me dad. So I started taking note of that and I asked the Federation and they only gave me a little bit. But I noticed that, that whole dad thing. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> um, oh yeah, roles. So if you are a commander or you know within you that you're going to be a commander um either which when i mean in the server that also means when we have our gfl bases um on earth and all of that if you are a commander get ready that you're getting training now you're gonna have heavy training in order for you to be able to handle the amount of assignments you're gonna have in a day and the amount of information you're gonna have in a day you're gonna have classified information that you can't tell the rest because you need to know where we are headed so it's just like the president needs to know exactly what's going on everywhere. It's going to be like that. And so, again, it's not going to be ego because that's a huge responsibility. A matter of if you know your commander or you're going to be one, you know you have the, the skills to do that. So you're going to have classified information. You're going to get briefings almost all day, 24-7. And you're going to be made. You're going to have guides and beings come through to update you on what's going on in the galaxy, on the planet, or what's happening with your people. So you're always going to be in touch. Always. Okay? And always almost be in assignment mode or mission mode. Especially the big assignments you get, it's going to be large. If you are a general, you are going to be leading a lot of the other star seeds or the teachers and the guards and stuff like that. So you are like... um. So the commanders are going to know the plan and everything going on and have in touch with everything. And then the guard, the generals are going to also be doing that in a sense too. But it's going to be like they, they are the commanders to, as a team. So as a team, they are the commanders. So the commanders will be like, oh, shoot, um, guys, the Federation gave me an update on what's going on in Congo and in Palestine and this and that or the generals are like we have these the Federation told me about all this but the commanders are like listen it's all part of the plan we don't rush ahead to try and do something because in a year or two we're going to be able to help them and then the generals are like oh okay and then the generals could tell the rest guys don't worry about that it's all part of the plan you see what I mean so each of us are getting different insights and abilities that are helping the whole collective if you're a teacher it's going to be your job to be giving messages out or guiding the agents and the others so that they can be in their power. So maybe some of the generals are like, listen, we need like the Archon are like the commanders will be like, OK, Archon are coming soon. The generals will be like, OK, well, we can do this, this and that. Generals are going to tell um, the the guards or the defense force, look, be ready for when they're coming and let us know if some infiltrate. And they'll be like, okay, we'll protect the people we're on it. The teachers are like, okay, looks like we got to teach more higher vibrational things. I can't stress how much this is a deep team effort. So as you're getting your understanding of your part, step into that real good because no one could do it like you. Big time. I'm going to say it again. No one could do it like you no matter where you are at. Zara asked, you could be part teacher, healer, general at once in your own way, in your own areas. Yeah, like if you're a general, some of you, you'll notice it's like you're meant to be a general and and over um, overanalyze everything that's going on, but also teach and also defend, but you'll notice it can be too much. 
So that's what I mean by you, you are going to have, it's going to overlap a little bit, but you'll notice depending on what your role is, whatever it is, it's like you're getting certain insights or assignments or anything, whatever it is. Buddha nature. Yes, sir. I know, Marissa, I saw you calling me, but I was always on like last night. I saw you calling me, but I was in the middle of a mission. I was like, damn, I got to text her later. And then I forgot and I was too tired as hell. So um, we could talk later tonight if you want. Oh, should I update you guys? Okay. This is something. This is what I mean by this is going to be a good example of like what we're going to do. So um, I never told you guys much about this, but the the reptilian that I was fighting, I talked about in my YouTube video that was taking over the town. I was battling this guy for months. And I was hunting him down because his reptilians were everywhere. And so then I was getting to the boss, but I wasn't strong enough to fight him. I was like, this guy's way too strong. I can't even handle the reptilians he sends. So then once I could handle the reptilians, I was like, okay, now I want to fight the boss. But then I was fighting the boss and that was hard. Damn. So then I needed Broly and I needed Genie. And I had Ange come too. And when we went in the astral... It was heavy. We, we woke up. Some of us woke up with scratches on us or we were completely drained. It, it was hard. But then after about a month or two of training, we beat him. But it took a while because this this guy would jump on different people and he would jump on like that one reptilian star seed I was talking about because he was the best host for him. And the best therapist couldn't help this boy. The best teacher's going to help this boy. And I told his parents, I said, I will fight for your son. I couldn't tell them he had a, an alpha draconian archon on him. But I just said, I'll fight for your son. We beat him. Now he's doing better. I talked to the parents. They're like, wow, all of a sudden he's doing better. I don't understand. Uh, everything's going well all of a sudden. I was like, you're welcome. Right? And now everybody around town is doing better all the people that had reptilians that were led by him they're all everything's getting better so now caledonia is considered gfcc territory gfcc is us galactic federation command center so when i make the i'm making a base in my basement so all the agents that are around town are going to be in my house and they're going to have a space here and the podcast and then that's going to result in an actual business um, area in my town and if you guys want you could also visit me there so this is this is our home base our command center base and this is going to be a franchise so some of you are probably going to have a gfcc base wherever you are in the world and all agents are going to flock especially um ets that are among us physically they're going to visit you they're going to be like thank you for making a base like this is awesome gonna uh. pick up from here now you have to call me in in some of those astral missions. I want to call on all of you. Now, Jeannie and Broly and Ange were the first that I was like, okay, you guys could actually help me. And so we were busting our ass in the astral and physically as well. And we beat it. So we're like, okay, we're good. So now Cal my town is considered our territory. And so I will need some of you to help me Probably I have my astral guard scanning and taking note, but um, if you guys want, you could come to my town physically or astrally. Um, and if you notice that you are claiming territory in your area from uh, a dark being that has basically the boss level, you could call upon your people in the server. You could call upon us. We will be here. So from now on, as you guys are getting more advanced, I'm going to start calling upon you more. I'm going to be like, all right, this one I need um andy or this one i need ollie or something it's going to be very well teamed we're collecting our territory right now so even in your town it's like you are collecting you're making your town your territory you're collecting it and then giving it to the gfcc saying all right gf gfl this is our territory now that is what we're doing and we're awakening everybody as we do it I don't know how to astral project yet. Many people in my like city they need to like in my school especially in that area. I really need like a defense. 
from dark Listen, beings. You are all in training, so don't be upset. Like, look, when I was facing the boss, and we we basically we got our asses whooped. Excuse my language. I was like, oh shoot. And we all call each other. We were, we were side eyeing each other when we first got on the call. We're like, dog, that was different than we thought it would be. So we started training for a, literally a whole month, training and trying to fight him, fighting him in the astral and all of that. And then he wanted an arena. And then we did the arena and then we, we won. But it took a while to get there. So take your time with your evolution. Because if you're just starting out like oh i want to figure out first how to beat one reptilian figure out how to beat one reptilian once you get that and then you get your strength then you're like all right defeating reptilians is a is a tuesday now i want to do more i want to beat the boss level or i want to know how to shield i mean you already learned how to shield because you were fighting this reptilian you learned how to shield how to fight astrally how to do all that you got so many skills from fighting this reptilian now you're like all right i want to i want something a little harder and then you're going to get a little harder. No rush ever. Do not. Thank you for that, Mo. Do not rush. Yeah, you guys are like talking about doing all these crazy stuff and leaving your body. But I'm still on the stage of like, don't ha I don't even have vivid dreams yet. My dreams are about r fairly random s shit to be at least. And that's okay. It, it always starts like that and you as you know their messages so you also have to study dreams and how the gfl is giving you briefings because they're always giving you guys briefings every night through dreams or it could be your ancestors or your guides whatever it is i just consider it the gfl because we're all working toward the same thing they're working to help you so that's also a thing of studying like okay how do i know um what is ancestors and what is gfl what is a briefing was that's all things we're studying even me i'm like I, I, i'm trying to figure some a lot of things out so it's always a game of understanding yourself more and evolving more and that's what makes it fun i have a question sure so you're talking about like, uh briefings um how does that work so briefings, essentially, I'll give the definition is just like if the government were to give you a whole page document on something, the Galactic Federation will give you these documents just energetically. So it's like a download or um, especially at night, like in the astral, I was talking about the one with the with the Fae. They, they had me go to the astral realm and experience it like that. And that was a whole briefing. So it's like they're they're just giving you insight on something or wisdom on something. So you understand it. Okay, um, can they, like, give you scenarios? Like, fighting someone? Yeah, like, yeah, you mean, yeah. like, can they give you information on someone you're gonna fight or how to beat somebody? Well, kinda, like that. Yes, they... Because my dreams have been, like... Yeah, because, like, my dreams have been, like, crazy lately. Did you have a dream about a bridge? What is with the bridge? No, no, like my my dreams have been getting crazier. Yeah, what, what your guys are talking about something with a bridge. Do you know what they're talking about? No. Okay, it's a literal bridge. Interesting. That maybe that'll make sense later. But um there's something with a bridge. Maybe you're gonna have a dream about that soon. But whatever it is, there's something with a bridge that's important. Maybe that's metaphorical. But no matter what, you got a briefing about bridge. Maybe you're right, Mo. Bridge the gap. Something about bridging. It's important for you. Um, remember, briefings could be on anything. It could be on they're giving you symbolisms in the dreams for what's to come. Or they're giving you warnings. Or they're telling you, oh, we're, we're coming soon. Whatever it is, they're giving you in some way that some sort of information that's going to help you out in some form. Can I, like... Give you like an example, like how my dreams have been like. Sure, hey, you can give me a brief one, yeah. Uh, so like in my dream, there was like this guy. He was telling me why I was suffering in the physical world and how to like fix that, basically. That was a blunt briefing. Yep, that was a blunt one. 
he just came in and told you straight up some a lot of times these briefings won't be as um straight up because they're almost like puzzles just like like for example the fairy one i was talking about um that's like a small example or like andy had one where he was dreaming about us and like macklin turned into an anaconda and the anaconda's representation of power or might he's basically saying macklin's going to be stepping into her power more and is going to be very potent coming up as she is now but is going to be even more so it was symbolisms for that and it's always like because it's so consciously sometimes they need to tell you shit up they'll just jump in your dream and be like listen this this and that or they'll make you live it out it's this is what i mean by psionics is so interesting because you can't you could understand it but you can't always understand the exact details and like how it works it's just so the only word is magical um someone asked cash any tips on overcoming my rebellious nature and Aaliyah said, my tip, because I have this strongly, is use it to lead you closer to your goals and your truths. Embrace that you're different from the crowd, but try to lead by example, not to combat others too much. Let them be, and it may help them change their outdated ways. That was bomb as hell. Thank you. So that's essentially just like that. You need to you realize you're rebellious because you want you notice you're different and you want to do what's opposite of what they set is normal or what is the way here you know it's wrong so like for example like i go to school and i'd be rebellious with my clothes especially when i was pro black at the beginning i'd wear a lot of like if you have me on snapchat you see the old videos i post from high school i'm wearing pro black shirts i'm wearing fur coats to school i have my fists up in the air and you just see that pan african flag on me and i have my afro out that was me being rebellious to the social construct that was within the school because I was the only black kid in the school. I was being rebellious. So you realize, put that rebellious nature into a more 5D way. So it's not, oh, I'm being rebellious, I'm, I'm fighting. It's like, I'm doing what is different to show people a new way, which may include having to push back on the ways that are not right. But you're not working hard, you're working smart. This is why I want all of you to play chess. Because you're realizing, I could defeat the king without having to smash the board. I could, I could beat the game through the game. But that's why we're on Earth. We're working on the ground. We're, we're hacking the game, we're beating the game, being in the game. Okay, do you guys have any final questions? Um, I'm going to head out soon and if you guys want to continue to talk, which I would love for you to, don't forget you guys can stay in the server and we have, um, you guys can either stay in here or you can go into the galactic chat rooms down below, uh, whatever it is. I would love for you guys to keep interacting if you feel so, so don't be afraid to. Um, and I'll probably pop my head in a little later if you guys are still chatting here and I'll see what's up when my nephew leaves. If not, I'll, you guys will see me go live. Um, and then, yeah. And then I'll start putting together the other classes for us. I got a question. Sure. Because I've been wrestling with this for like years. <laughs> but like ever since I tapped in a bit to my clairvoyance, like I notice it's as if I have like spiritual Tourette's. You know what I'm saying? Because like every time I go up in there, I'm always bumping. Like, okay, let me put it this way. First of all, I'm a dancer, but I chose like the most aggressive style. And that was because I needed something to really, you know, release that tension. And that, that was perfect. But then I started to realize it rippled into, I guess, my etheric field. And I would I would notice visions of my energetic my energetic body just going sporadic. And then by the time I look around in that space, I'm bumping my head against what appears to be people that were around me. And as it, I don't, I don't know if they were trying to like help me still myself. I don't know. They're saying it's like you, it's like you're there physically, but you're saying like you bump into like, like there's beings there, like you bump into them. It's like, cause I'm experiencing, I'm experimenting with a uh, conscious projection mm -hmm. and every now and then i just like 
I, it's like I flinch or I fidget, but so sporadically, I, I, I would bump the head of some nearby individual in my head, you know what I'm saying? Or in my org field. Mm, okay. That is you experiencing actually getting, um, you're getting more access to a new power and you are getting more, um, it's like, it's your, how do I explain that? I like how you call it like spiritual Tourette's kind of. It's almost like um, it's like when I'm in my bed sometimes I'm sitting down, and then I'll just get like a flash vision of something, yeah. and then a being will like pop up right there, and then it's gone instantly though. Yeah, I kind of like flinch a little bit maybe, or yeah. it's like overwhelming. Yeah, you're just getting more more astral awareness, and more like you're feeling what it's gonna feel like when it's more advanced. So those things it won't be like. It's going to be less like surprising. It's going to be more easy to do that. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, your, your guys keep showing me, it looks like a piece of paper. I'm like a piece of paper like this, like a lined piece of paper and a pen. Have you been I got, I have writing a book right writing? in front of me? Like right, the pen is open and the book is right in front of me. And I have been, I got back into writing recently. Perfect. Okay. So they want you to keep writing and to study what your abilities are because they're also talking about a hole it's like a black I, hole i know exactly what they're talking about what is that i call it turia because uh ever since i i achieved like this unwavering meditation i, I it's like a transcendental state like when i try to envision when i even envision it's like i go into this third person type of state and then it's as if some kind of it's, it's as if a black hole opens up from behind my head and it's like i'm resting right there okay do that now so they're talking about writing and they're talking about the black hole so that makes sense they want oh, snap. You, know, you know what so that's what i've been writing about see. but in the most complex uh word stitched way you know because I'm, I'm i'm gonna wrap it that's what it does <laughs> Cause I don't feel like writing a book, so I was like, "Well, I I did I did like rapping once upon a time ago, so I kind of revitalized that." I would love you to continue to write. Just make sure you're writing the details, and then you could simplify it for the song. And you know what? I would love for if there's any of you that are experiencing something like this, you guys could give me the PDF or the file of what you got and give it to me. I would love that. I could also put something together for us, some sort of book or file that we all have access to. So that all of you can have access to this library of information that we all um, get in different areas and different spots in our journeys. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So now keep going with that. Explore that more. Don't be afraid to go deeper and see what you get. Okay. And make sure you write it down. All right. Appreciate it. I want to start having vivid dreams because uh, my ones are, you know what? This is what happened with me before i'll go i'll say this uh when you I, I always wanted my dreams to be more vivid selenite under your pillow or beside your pillow you know it helps hell a lot but then it got to the point where i didn't need selenite anymore and i would only use selenite if i wanted to stay in the astral deeper say i was gonna go fight being like dark beings i would put on a selenite or put a selenite beside my bed or under my pillow and that would help me stay astral deeper so um sometimes selenite wouldn't even work at the beginning it wouldn't work sometimes and that's just because you're still evolving and what they always tell me about it is it's kind of complex the briefing they gave me i'll try and simplify it it's like it's like when you're raising in consciousness and you're in the light you always are going to be astral projecting. Almost every single night, even when you don't want to, sometimes you're going to you're mm -hmm. going to go because your soul knows it's got to. But when you're in a lower frequency, you're more connected to the physical. So your dreams are maybe fuzzy, or your astral projections are fuzzy. It's like you're tuning a radio to for it to be clear. And when you're tuning it, it's fuzzy until you get clearly there, and you got to figure out where the good tune is. It's like that. So you're tuning it, but you keep tuning it back. So then it's like you don't dream a lot, or it's fuzzy. But you're raising your vibration, you're becoming more conscious. So you're tuning it. So you're gonna notice all your astral projections and dreams. You remember a lot of them, or they're super clear, like it's real life. That's because you're in the vibration now and you're ready. 
I want to start doing it the natural way without crystals or pills or herbs. Yep, you will get there. I always wanted it like that. And I hope I want you guys to use me as an example. That's what I'm here for. That it used to piss me off because I couldn't ask a reject or nothing. And they kept telling me, use the light projection way, which is the lucid dream way. You go to sleep and then you ask a project. But I was like, no, nah, I want to do it the hard way. I want to do it the hard way where you meditate and pop out. I still can't do it that way. So now I go to sleep and then I astral project from there. That's the light technique, we call it. And it's light because you're not forcing and it's not dense. It's like you're way in a higher vibration with it. So, nah, for me, like literally since I didn't have vivid dreams and I tried like muggle tea and crystals, I thought maybe I had some <laughs> mental condition where my dreams just were um, very fuzzy. They felt like visualizations rather than... Yeah. I promise you they'll get clear as you evolve. I wish someone told me that because I would always ask, how come they're so fuzzy? How come I can't astral project? I want to astral project every single night. And I want to just astral project on command. Like say, I'm going to go here and then do it. Now I'm there, but it took me a while. And I wish someone told me, slow down. Like as you advance, you will get there. If you don't have this, if you're like me, you don't have the skill to just close your eyes and pop out, then it's going to take you some time. But as long as you are having you're taking note of all your travels all your travels which includes dreams no matter what even when you're dreaming you're traveling astrally or like your, your consciousness is traveling i should say so no matter what no matter what your travels are take note and sit with them and you remember them every day you're going to realize your dream recall and your astral recall is growing and then all of a sudden my, you pills or nothing you could just do it my mom she like has like like very vivid dreams and like even lucid dreams where she even feels emotions like and she doesn't want to have like and like she can like she can use the lucid dreams for astral project but she doesn't want to use that power like what's wrong with you i'm like what the fuck I'm, yeah i was mm -hmm. like nah i'm jealous i want to know but then you yeah, I, it's funny it. because once you get good at it, you start running from it. That was, I actually, I always beg, I was studying and getting there. And then next thing you know, I got the ability to travel and command myself where to go and go where I wanted to. But I couldn't always remember. And I'm like, okay, well, I want to remember more. I'm now training myself to remember. So when I go to my physical body, I don't forget stuff. I remember more. So that's where I'm at right now with my astral training. Because I'll go to the moon and then I'll forget half of what I saw. So, um... So it gets to the point after in your journey where you're like, okay, now I'm astral projecting. I'm doing this every night. I'm just doing it. But then some nights you don't want to go places. And then you're like, guys, please, I don't want to go anywhere. And then you go somewhere and you wake up and you're just tired. You're like, I don't want to astral project. It's funny. It's like you, you don't have it and then you beg for it and then you get it and then you beg to not have it. Ain't that great, you literally get that yin and yang phase. My mom, <laughs> like, she has like left her body one time and saw dead family members and i was like no why didn't you go and see et's but she's like no i wasn't interested in et's and like my mom said that like to ask for a project the standard is you can't even have any desire you just have to be like ego death i don't know if that's true but what she means is you do have to be 5d when you are in 5d astral projecting is a tuesday again you just it's easy but when you're in if you're still if you're still in 40 and again that's not a bad thing we jump we flop sometimes so when you when you're in 40 it's like you have to project sometimes or it's fuzzy or you're in and out when you're in 3d you dreaming is like is like a rare occasion so um you all are in 40 5d okay so as you step more into 5d your soul insight when you get into the soul you just travel on command and it's easy piece of lemon squeezy because, again, you, because you're in 5D, your physical body becomes a limitation. So you get excited. Like every night I go to bed and I'm like, all right, let's go somewhere. Like I'm going to go places. Like I'm, I'm gone all night. And sometimes I'll come back. You know, you wake up in the middle of the night, check up on your body. Okay. And then you go back. Like, That's what it's going to be like because you're, you're in the 5D awareness now. So you're like, you're like, okay, the physical is kind of boring now. Um, I'm excited to go back to my physical to do physical stuff, but 
I now want to do more stuff. I I want to go in the galaxy and stuff. Nah, I had like a theory. I think I already sent you the video, but a while ago. But essentially, it was that. So basically, he, us souls, right? We had too much power being in the higher dimensions. We would always jump from timelines and mess around the thing. So then the elders they put us in a prison, which is like the physical. You know, so many. Chemical limitations, limitations of time, gravity limitations. You know all that stuff.、Mm-hmm. To like take、I'll、away our power. You, that is a theory that's been going around, and it is not true, but there is truths in it. So, like they talk about、um, physical limitations here and stuff like that, because this is a library planet, and what some beings have done here has caused. Something to be trapped in the physical, so that's what I mean by it. it is true, but also not, and that's why I want you to take note of the the misinformation, like we talked about earlier, and how the archon have slipped in some things. It's they always do that. They always give you the half truth, so you believe, and then they give you the half lie. It makes me cheese, but that's why we're here together. We're here to give each other the truth and find the truth together. It's an interesting theory. I actually like it. But like, yeah, it's interesting, right? But who owns like the get- federation? I think you talked about. Like, I think it was in an old video on your TikTok about the well, Veltas or something. Yeah, there is no owners of the Galactic Federation because it's very much a a democracy. So all the hundreds of thousands of civilizations vote、mm-hmm. on certain laws for the ga- for the galaxy, the universe. Um, and vote to do certain things. Like for Earth, they were like, "When should we tell humans?" And there was a, there was still a lot of、uh, buttling. People were like, "Okay, well, should we, should, should we tell them now and then let them awaken?" And others like, "No,、um, let them evolve themselves." And we decided as a democracy, we said, "All right, give them to 2027, and we will expose the truth and let them get into it themselves." But like, who are the elders? Like, I don't know enough about them. Like. Um, those are like it's like commanders. It's like people that have been doing this for a long time. A lot of you are elders because you've been in the galaxy for a very long time, and you've been like say the beginning of the Lyran、uh, wars. You were part of the people that initiated the Galactic Federation and created it. So you are an elder. You are one that a lot of the beings look up to. But it doesn't make you coming, baby. It doesn't make you more. Powerful, or it doesn't make you better. It just makes you more wise, and everybody looks to you. You can come in. <laughs> come in, Baba. No, no the oh, child is gonna be、hi. having a lot of spiritual stuff. Like he's gonna be soon getting into his psychic, the astral. You want to say something? Yeah. What do you want to say? That. See them? They all think you're cute. <laughs> What's going、Tell、on, man? Love them. Hello, little、oh. guy. <laughs> them. They love、hey. you too. Oh,、okay. we love you. Got the、so、young prince on the deal. Okay. I'm almost finished, Bubs. Yeah, yeah the little, the little bro. He's gonna get. Now the little bro, I can see he's gonna be seeing stuff. He's gonna be having、you、a lot of、it. travels, and you're probably gonna have to accompany him a lot、oh, spiritually. Apparently, he's already seeing stuff. Um, his parents were talking about seeing some things. Oh, we talked about seeing a robotoid in his room, and like how he was standing above his bed, and I was、oh. like, whoa. Uh huh. And people in the corner of his room. So he's already been seeing a lot, and you guys already know he's a lyran. So. Um, I was interested about the robotoids because I don't know much about them, and I asked the Federation. I only know a little bit, so maybe I should ask tonight more about robotoids. Yeah, please. I'm curious because, like, now I discovered that, like, robots or like silicon-based bodies can house souls. Yeah,、mm. I, I'm still trying to figure that out, but it's um, it's a mix of biology、um, and like actual. My eyes are. Yeah,、the、tell them about the robot you saw. You saw a robot in your room. A robot in my room. What did it look like? Beep. Beep. It was making those noises. 
Mm. <laughs> what did his eyes look like? What color were they? Hmm. And was he tall? Mm -hmm. Wow. What did he say to you? Did he say anything? He said, get out of bed. <laughs> he told you to get out of bed? Yeah. What else? Talk. And to talk? Yeah. What did the other <laughs> being look like you saw in the corner of your room? Did you see any other people in your room? What did they look like? Um, a cat in my room. It was a cat? Yeah. Oh, it looked like a cat? Mm. He likes a cat, there's cats. Wow, you saw cat people? And you saw the robot? Cat. The lyrans. Ah, that's and... amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you love lions, don't you? You're a lion, too. So is in my room. You saw the robot, and then did you see someone that was blue? Mm, a tall blue guy? Arcturian. It was, it was either Syrian or Arcturian, one of those. It was a Syrian. It was a Syrian. It was a Syrian. Yeah, I felt that. Okay, you go ahead, baby. <laughs> I was actually... No. I love this kid. He's funny. Right before you said that, I was like, this little kid's a Syrian. Like, I know he's a Syrian. I know he's yeah. a Lyran Syrian for sure. Yes. I was like, oh my goodness. He's such a little Syrian. No. No, my. <laughs> you can't eat it, bro. You can't eat the microphone. It's not food. <laughs> hey, it's <ASMR. laughs> Okay, it's guys. Let me head out. Let me take that back. Okay. Let me tell them bye. And then we'll go eat. Go ahead, baby. So cute. Aww. Oh, you still want to sit on my lap? Okay. All right, let me say bye to them, okay? You want to say bye? Bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, we will talk hey. again soon, guys. Raise your vibration um... before you fall to sleep. And what did you say? Remember that. Step up. Oh, okay. my mic was on. Okay. I will see you guys soon. And if you guys want to stay, you guys can. And then um, I'll join a little later when he leaves. All right. Did you say bye? Bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> see you later. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye. Oh, he's so cute. Nah, he's... Nah, little guy's so cute.